Welcome into the latest edition of ESPN FC Live here on ESPN Plus. I'm Dan Thomas, joined by Shaka Hislop and Stevie Nicholl. Later on in the show, we'll be getting all the reaction to Vinicius Jr. being racially abused as Real Madrid lost against Valencia. Uh, we'll be hearing what the Brazilian had to say and from Carlo Ancelotti as well. Plus, bring you scenes from Manchester as City celebrate women winning their third Premier League title in a row. We'll start, though, in Germany. One win now. In the final game of the season against Mainz, and Borussia Dortmund will be champions ahead of Bayern Munich. Edin, your overview of what must have been inside your mind a very emotional win. Yeah, it was a very emotional game. I think we had a good, good performance. We created lots of chances also in the first half. It was different uh, when, when after the red card, um, but I think we had a, a very good performance uh, away from home, and it was a very deserved win tonight. Is it harder for this team, with all the pressure on it, to go against 10 men after what happened against Stuttgart? Do you think that switched into a mind at all? I don't know. Uh, of course, we've been talking about it at halftime, what we have to do better than we did uh, in the recent game against 10 men when we played in Stuttgart. So, and, and, and if you see the reaction in the second half, uh, we, we, we always find the width. We played with two, three touches, could always find our, all, um, our fullbacks. And that means if we find our fullbacks very quick, they have to sprint. And if they have to sprint, they get tired. And if they get tired, we're going to open spaces for us to create chances. And this is what worked out really well. And I think um, we, 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 we played it really good um, and under all the circumstances, and we are really happy with the result. And when those spaces opened up, there was Sebastian Haller, who let's, let's remind ourselves the journey that he has been on. How do you put that into words? It's a miracle. Basically, it's a miracle. Um, I said every day that Zepp is with us is a gift. Uh, we've been missing him for such a long time. Um, everybody was talking about him as a number nine, but as a, as a person, he is so much important for our team, for our dressing room. And we are so happy that he's tonight our match winner. And he has to do it one more time, and then we're going to celebrate. So, one more game, one more step. What's it going to take in this next week? I guess you will be switching off from any media at all. Yeah, we're going to have a good rest. We're going to have a good... Good team talk where we're going to speak about what went well today, what we have to improve, and then we're going to sleep five times, six times, I don't know, I didn't count it. And then we're going to wake up and then we're going to show that we are ready to fight until the end. And then hopefully by the end of next week, we are celebrating with our fans. Edin Terzic has just described you as a miracle to us, given the journey that you've been on. How do you describe getting to this point now where you are one game away from being Deutsche Meister? If someone would have told me that uh, six months ago, I wouldn't believe, but uh, let's say it's uh, destiny, I don't know. But we just need to, uh, to believe and uh, stay positive between each other because a lot of things are possible if we believe and uh, if we stick together. And uh, the last, uh, last month since I'm here, you know, I've seen a lot of good things in the group and I can tell you it's not, it's not finished. Just a brilliant story. No matter who you support, you can't but fall in love with the Sebastian Haller timeline over the last 12 months to come back from testicular cancer to then score two, two goals mm. that's going to help Borussia Dortmund cross the line. Brilliant. Yeah, I, I mean, everything about this season from a Dortmund perspective um, just seemed, seemed unreal for, for, for so long um, until they put together that run. But Sebastian Haller personified that. Given the kind of um, fanfare maybe around his signing in the summer, could he take the place of Erling Haaland and then to, to be diagnosed with, with cancer as he has. And you, it, regardless, once you are diagnosed with cancer, once you have to undergo that treatment, nobody's quite sure how you're going to come back, when you're going to come back, if you're going to come back. For Sebastian Haller to come back as he did. If I was a Borussia Dortmund fan, Stevie, I think I'd have had to go for a long walk in that first <laughs> half because it's so stressful yeah. watching them because you think, oh, no. Oh, no, they're not going to blow it again, are they? No, and, and it, it actually is, but whether it's the fans or whether it's Sebastian Haller's teammates, they've got to be glad that he's playing number nine, he's the centre forward, yep. because if there's one man that's not going to be worried about the pressure of winning a title, it's him. And you see it in the way he takes the two goals. Yep. There wasn't a camera guy on the field, and you have to think... Because of what he's been through, it's like, 
Do you think I really care that we're under any sort of pressure to win a football league? I don't care. I'm just the happiest guy yeah. to be running around, sticking the ball in the back of the net and making thousands of people happy. So if I'm a Dortmund fan, yes, I understand what you're talking about. You're always negative. Everything's going to go wrong. You can't see the, you can't see the, the wood for the trees. But they've got this guy up front yeah. who... When it comes next weekend and there's a chance, you know we'll be nice and calm because of what he's been through. Frank, how cool is this story? Great story. It's a, it's a fantastic story. Everybody wants to hear that. I mean, it's an encouragement to all people, you know, suffering, uh, thinking that's uh, maybe the end of it. And uh, getting uh, the example of uh, Sebastian Aller, you know, gives you, um, you know, uh, the sparkle that you need, maybe, and the reaction that, you, that everybody needs to, to react. And it's a hope for life. Uh, and I, I agree with Stevie after, after what he says, you know, uh, every, everything is easy. Everything is a pleasure now for him. So, and I can see the second goal, he doesn't stress, you know, he goes slowly, make sure he put the ball in the net and everything's right because it's only fun. It's only a prolongation of something that he never expected. And um, we have to be grateful to, to, uh, to, to Sebastian Aller, what he shows to the world and uh, the stamina that he has uh, and, uh, and um, hopefully the, the, the rest of his fantastic life that he can have. On the final day of the season, they are champions. The bookies, no surprise, have them as big favourites. Nine to one on Bayern, meanwhile, at four to one after that loss against Leipzig. What's it going to be like, Stevie, now for the next few days for these Borussia Dortmund players? Well, uh, I'm hoping that the coach does exactly what they've done the whole season right. and they'll lead up to a game. You always say, never change anything. No, no, because you, when you start changing things, then you start putting doubts in, in players' minds. You know, everybody sees players turning up on, the, on cup finals and big games and everything and said, oh, they're, they're mentally tough and they're strong and this. Listen, before a game, certain players are pretty brittle. Right. You know, some guys get, get way too nervous. Some guys get way wound up. Other guys, like we're talking about Hilaire, will just be, can't wait to run out the tunnel into the sunshine. Sure. And so anything you do to try and nullify the importance of this game and turn it into another game as such then the better for the players and everybody. But Frank, as much as you can tell yourself it's just another game to stick to that routine, at the back of your mind, you know how huge this is. Of course you know. I mean, I played some, uh, some games, you know, where I knew that my change could align, could I change because of a win or, or, or loss. Uh, but what game would that be, said, Frank? You, know, you try... Excuse me? <laughs> what game would that be? <laughs> uh, <laughs> guess. Guess, <laughs> guess what? <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you, you know that you have to, to give everything, but you, you, you have to go back to the routine. And, uh, and we are competitors, so we are used to that. Deep inside, we know how to react. It, it's funny that uh, the afternoon of... Because we talk about the World Cup final, the, the, the afternoon of, of the World Cup, people would have thought, you know, you can't sleep, you're too stressed, you know. I, I the longest nap I ever had before a game, I slept for two and a half hours, and uh, I was ready. I was ready. My mind was ready. My, uh, my, my, uh, my body was ready. And I think the players they know. And some players are, I'm thinking about uh, Umels, uh, Sula, uh, Royce. They know, they have experience, they know how to deal with that and they can, they can deal with the youngest and, the, and talk to them. But deeply, everyone knows what they have to do. And the only thing that they have to do is keep on moving the way they move every day. Get back to their routines, don't change anything, don't plan anything. I know that they asked to the coach, you know, what he was planning to celebrate. <laughs> I think he, he, he refused to answer. It's completely right. Chakra, it's interesting, you've shared the story before of when things started to fall apart from Newcastle, mm -hmm. they had the big lead. Keegan started changing up, making, yeah. making changes, and then that had a ripple effect throughout the team. Yeah, it, 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 the anxiousness kind of um, goes through the, 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 the entire team, and, and you start questioning 
everything that you've done, everything that you're about to do, um, and, and, and that, that is certainly telling. So I'm, I'm with, with Steve 100%. Just keep things as normal as, as, as you always have. If it's give the players Monday and Wednesday off, then yeah. do exactly that. If it's practice set pieces on the Thursday, do exactly that. Think, think about, about nothing else. I, I, I think one of the big advantages to Dortmund here is that this final game against Mainz is at home. Dortmund have been simply outstanding at home. They have been 100% since, since before the World Cup. Um, that is, is a huge boost. And I think that also, because now you're in a normal setting, one that you're very familiar with, that also helps to ease the nerves and the anxiousness. It's a shame Craig's not here. They told the perfect story the other night yes, on Extra yeah, Time, yeah. where Celtic were going for the league title. That's the, the first time anyone's ever said that, <clears throat> by the way. What? It's a shame Craig's not here. Aye. Aye. <laughs> and, and, they, and, they, they, and they could have won it. They could have won it the sec, two games before the end and didn't. Yeah. And on the Monday, they realised that every Tuesday they used to go to the pub as a team. Yeah. And they weren't going to do it. And they realised that you know what? We need to we need to do what we always do. Sure. And so they did. They went to the pub on the Tuesday before the Saturday. Got drunk. Everybody in a Celtic, Celtic fan was, was telling me go home and stop drinking and you got to win at the weekend. But, but it worked. It paid off for them because it settled them all down. They had a few beers. They came in on Wednesday. They trained normally. All the tension had gone. Mm -hmm. Right. All the tension just went and they end up winning the league on the Saturday. A couple of signs then on a Tuesday night if you're in Absolutely. Dortmund. Absolutely. No if, you, if that's <laughs> right. what you normally do, you do that. Frank, how difficult is it, though, to shut yourself off from all the outside noise? Because, you know, that's what everyone in Dortmund is going to be talking about between now and that match. You cannot avoid, you know, people talking and you cannot avoid hearing what they're going to say. But... Um, Again, it's part of your life and you have to live with that and you have to be ready for that. At the end of the day, it's for the best. You know, you're not talking about a game that you have to win, otherwise you're going to be relegated. It's a game that you have to win to, to get champion and uh, that should bring, you know, something special into your body, into your brain. And uh, people can talk about whatever, you, what you, whatever they want, uh, but you know what you have to do. You're not going to stay in the corner. I agree with TV. Go to the pub if you used to go to the pub. Do what you have to do and if people are getting nice to you or saying, oh, you have to win. Well, just say, shut up, you know, we're going to do what we have to do, we'll see. Shut up, buy me a beer. Shut up. Yeah. That's enough of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.